gonna have an absolute freaking blast tonight okay we got a lot of cool stuff planned for you um hour ish depending on how much more you want to go after that uh, that'll be up to you guys let me read you a little story this is from i don't know if you know this author price per shed keep looking down but you guys are up there from this book you see it's old and tethered mm. quantum leap okay story so we're waiting for everybody else to show up i'll share this with you okay so this is i'm, I'm narrating but it's in the first person but it's not really me right so it says um i must have been in the fifth grade the next meeting is starting now. it must have been in the fifth grade maybe 11 years old or so when my little world grade school out in west texas had a halloween carnival one of the junky prizes you know those little cheesy prizes you get one of the junky prizes i won was that that night was a woven straw tube about five inches long the red green and yellow bands of straw were threaded together in a diamond shaped triangle pattern diamond shaped kind of woven pattern the toy kind of puzzled me i had no idea what i pulled out of the carnival's fishing pond so I threw it in the sack with the rest of the little trinkets of stuff that I got in cheap candy that I had won, forgetting about it until I saw an older kid a little later in the night kind of waving one of these things around on his fingers. So I got one of those. What is it? I still didn't know what it was. Called it Chinese handcuffs. He said, you stick, just make sure I'm online there, you stick a finger in from each side, and when you try to pull it back out, your finger gets trapped. Here, let me show you how to do it. So picture the older boy showing the younger boy, me then being narrated, right? He's showing him how to put his fingers into this Chinese handcuff, right? Um, so he said, oh, don't worry, he said, it's just made of straw. Looks kind of boring. And I was skeptical, something about this bothered me. He goes, let me see you do it. The older boy said, sure. Inserting one finger into each end of the straw, kind of like this, right? You guys ever play with these things? They're kind of funny. Then he pulled his hands apart, and sure enough, the weave tightened around the two fingers. Straw handcuffs. Can't get loose. Chinese handcuffs. He grinned as I started, stared at the woven strands, clutching his two fingers. He then wiggled his hand free. So he pulled it and went to pull away, got stuck, but then he was able just to get free. Seemed harmless. He goes, now nah, you try, he said. Make sure your fingers are in all the way so you can make it work. And it worked. I crammed my fingers in as far as I could and tried to pull my hands apart. The straw tube pulled my flesh and held my fingers close. I was surprised, even stunned at the straw's refusal to yield. The more I struggled, the more firmly the Chinese handcuffs held me. I pulled so freaking hard that my knuckles popped. But the straw just dug deeper into my skin the harder that I struggled. The harder I tried, the worse it got. I started sweating, my face kind of turned red, I was starting to get a bit embarrassed. My fingers ached with my pride as well, but I kept freaking struggling. I knew it was somehow possible to break through because I just watched the other boy do it, kind of effortlessly. He was bigger and stronger, so I soon to try harder. And as it turned out, trying harder was the trap. Eventually, the older boy lost interest in the trick and shared the secret with me. He said, it's real easy. Just relax, push your fingers in, instead of trying to pull them apart, give them a little twist, and just ease your fingers out of the holes. It sounded all wrong, pushing your fingers into the Chinese handcuffs in order to pull them out, as he said. But I did exactly that, and all of a sudden, my left hand slid out from the straw clutches. Then I slipped, my, slipped the toy off my other finger, and amazed how easy it was to break free when I made the right moves so he goes on to say that that happened about 38 years ago just turn this up a little it happened about 38 years ago looking back and somehow i can see how sometimes life is a lot like chinese handcuffs it can happen to anybody you get caught up in habits that look innocent enough and don't realize you're trapped yourself until you try to break free it confuses and frustrates you when you when your struggles to get unstuck don't help you try harder and harder and harder and it doesn't work you see other people enjoying personal breakthroughs and assume that they must be stronger more capable or somehow better than you anybody know what i'm talking about here right you conclude that you need to try harder in order to break the bonds that hold you back let me share 
with you an old secret about breakthroughs. Consider trying easy. Relax, take the pressure off. Try a new twist. A solution may be as simple as slipping free from the straw bonds of the Chinese handcuffs. And again, I'll share with you a brilliant little book by Parker Jack, Quantum Leap Strategy. I've had that one for years and years and years. And we'll let that lead us into tonight. I want to welcome you guys for being here. And we've got a powerful presentation. As you see, there's no PowerPoint here. And there's no to-do list to follow. What is here is you and I. My job is to facilitate, to provide solutions, to pull out of you the answers that you've been looking for. Now, we all agree right here and right now, just based on kind of the headlines leading in here, getting stuck, struggling, habits to free you, then indeed we all have something we either want to get rid of or that we want to attain or both. Agreed? Just give me a hell yeah, Pat. You guys can talk back and forth with me. It's totally cool. See, I, I can see everything you say all down here. And we are running a new platform tonight, as you see. Um, and say hi to Callie at Hi Callie, Miss Natalie, Brian, Jim, I didn't say to you yet. Mike, Susan, great to have you here. Mr. John, hopefully Nick is with you too, John. Um, we're on a new platform, so some of the technology I might screw around with and screw up, but that's part of what we do. But we each have something that we either want to get rid of or find. We can do that in a short hour time. You'd be amazed what we can do, what we can bust down breakthrough tonight. Just like the simple little adjustment in the use of those Chinese handcuffs went from a steady, constant struggle that no matter how much harder you tried would not get you the resolve you wanted to, slight adaptation in the game. In that case, exactly opposite of what the boy was doing, but it actually was an easier effort to get the results they wanted. And, I mean, let's be honest with each other. Do you know anyone in your life who just seems like they just don't struggle that hard and they get outstanding results? Somebody that just seems to like glide through effortlessly. We all do. We, we know those people. And yes, truth is, they do know something that you don't know yet. We're going to uncover some of that tonight. You know, I got so many cool ideas i'm just looking at here because they came in through here about things we're struggling with um from focus to commitment what's more well, priorities making the best use of time um clarity all of these things come out of a, just a few things and that's what we're going to do tonight tonight we're going to discuss the three biggest mistakes that even the smartest people make in a, in, a, in a routine capacity and two simple habits that can honestly lead to a friction free life that is now opens you to attract wealth and abundance and full prosperity hi that's going to be our show tonight so again i encourage you and, and, and invite you to participate in the presentation i will routinely Check out this monitor. That's this one down here, which is where you talk back to me. Let's check it in. Alberto, great to see you there. Mr. Michael, awesome. Jason checking in. Chat's not available. Yeah, not chat, Jason, because if I put you on chat, then all you do is chat with each other. I can't see the I can't see the uh, I can see it, but I can't keep up with it. So I decided to do the QA, if you guys are cool with that. Okay. Let's just use QA. Um, as a chat, Mr. Ryan checking in. Awesome to have you, Ryan. Thank you very much for being here. Who else we got down there? Casey's in. Mike's here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, I can ask you a lot of questions tonight. That's the interaction part. That's a facilitation part of it. Start with right now. Talk to me about a legitimate challenge, and that's you know, this is something that you know is fundamentally one of those things. That's keeping you locked in the Chinese handcuffs. Okay? That's what I want to talk about. Just think about it. If you knew that solution, you'd be freed. So there was a conversation I had 
of the day about what people are looking for, okay? And I, I'll be honest with this, 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 this metaphor I'm going to use, I stole, and I steal, I just eternally borrowed it. <laughs> somebody, I heard it from somebody else, in other words. But it basically goes like this, what are people looking for? And it was a comparison to a, a guy who's running a big printing shop, a big, you know, like, uh, printing company. And he's got this big, massive printing machine that does everything, right? You just put in paper here and type some things on a keyboard and voila, it all produces out there the other end in it binds and weaves and staples and collates and does everything in between on a big conveyor massive machine and, and about 100 people work like clockwork producing bam 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 one day just stop boom just stop dead in its tracks everybody just stopped with it they were frozen they didn't know what to do and the owner didn't know what to do because it never stopped but now it stopped now he's stuck and he just didn't know what to do We've all been stuck. And there's times we've been stuck when we didn't have the answer. So his antidote was to call the manufacturing company. Dear manufacturing company, I got an emergency here. We got 100 people standing around. We're stuck. We don't know what to do. Can you help me? So the first company calls, says, yes, we'll be right out there. And in the meantime, he called the second company. He's panicking. He doesn't know if the first guy's going to show or not. Second guy. I had a big manufacturing company, well, printing, printing company, 100 people, machines stopped. They're sitting around. We don't know what to do. Can you help me? He said, yeah, we'll be right out. So the first guy comes out, looks at the machine, looks at the people, looks at the manager, looks at the machine, looks at the people, looks at the manager, looks one more time at the machine, looks again at all these people standing around doing nothing, looks at the manager, wow, you got a problem here. The machine's not working. I was like, well, no crap. So I called you. He goes, well, I got the solution. He goes, here. See this 900 page, no, 2600 page manual? This has got your answer. Study this, do what it says, and we'll be fixed. It's a $2,000 manual. And I was like, holy crap. All right, but if the answer's there, it must be worth it. Just as he's about to pay, the other cell, the other repairman shows up. The repairman goes, hey, sir, what's your problem? Machine won't work. Broke it. So, all right. So same thing. Machine, people, owners. Listen, it's pretty simple. See that manual you got they put in front of you? Go to page 15. It'll show you how to reset it. Let me show you. Goes behind the machine, a little red button underneath this little door and a clip. Presses the button, resets the button. <laughs> Thing fires right up. That'd be $2,000. Who do you think got paid that day? Who provided the client needed that day? See? My, my, my point here is, and this is why we're going to approach this a little differently tonight. We don't need volumes of anything to go study and figure it out on our own. We need answers that produce results. And that's why we're here tonight. Okay. And I specifically, we're going to talk about the three biggest mistakes that smart people routinely make. I see it again and again and again. When I say smart, I'm talking about like really smart people. But we're also going to talk about two repeatable, doable, teachable, learnable, immediately, easily implement implementable. That means that you can implement it. Habits that allow for friction-free life and open us up to attract wealth and abundance think in terms of not some big fat manual think in terms of being told how to press the button and think in terms of chinese handcuffs knowing the right moves to provide for a solution and an easier way through and when i say easy i don't mean like we're all looking for easy right as well life isn't made that way we all know that 
but you know what I mean by easier, a smoother, friction-free process. Cool? Cool. All right. So as we go here, we'll, there's Miss Steph. Hello, Miss Steph. Miss Steph rocks. She started taking martial arts, which is awesome, and is committed to steady, constant, moving forward progress. Love that about you, young lady. Sammy, check it in. Welcome, Miss Sammy. We got Annie. Annie. Miss Annie is checking in from the other coast. That would be over in Europe. Are you like five hours ahead of us and you're supposed to be in bed, Miss Annie? Thank you very much for checking in. You're awesome. The fear of not having interested people in what I have to say. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to write some of these down. Annie's awesome. So, write these down so that we can address them, okay? Fear of lack of interest. That's a good one. Because you hear that, that I hear all the time. Sherry checking in, said it's just a kick in the butt I need because my business has been on hold for months. Trying to learn to rework my time to blend my responsibilities together. So, thanks for doing this presentation tonight. We'll give you a kick in the butt. I'm good with that. Um, Miss Susan, I'm always busy, but not necessarily doing what's most important. Just seem to uh, just seem to be sucked into what's happening in the moment. Pretty sure it's because I'm ADD. Oh <laughs> uh, goodness, shiny object syndrome. All, um, although that may be the reason, it must be the excuse. My any ideas? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're gonna attack that. You know what? These are all awesome. I'm not even going to write them on the board. We're just going to answer them as we go. Susan, Michael, awesome. We'll just get get to them as we go. So what we're going to do here, um, oh, you're in Australia. And from Australia, I thought you were, uh, my bad. I knew that. Ah, sorry, hon. But that still means like the middle of the night for you. You rock for being on this call with us. Uh, how to balance family and business in regards to time. And this is from Jason. Awesome. Balance is a funny thing. And clarity for the right direction from Deborah. Now, balance is a funny thing because virtually nothing is balanced ever, ever. It never will be. But I know what you're saying. You're saying that, Pat, the way I have it right now is not working. That's what you're saying. How do I get it more and more? All right, so let's dive into this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to intertwine these into our discussion as we go. Okay, so what I'd like to do is start with the three, and look over here because that's where my, my sketch to follow along with this is, okay? Three biggest mistakes, we'll start with that, okay? The first one that I see on a regular basis, and this will make sense as we get further into this, although, we'll, like I said, we'll weave these in, okay? The first one is waiting to the end in what it is we do to celebrate. Now, You've all heard this number one mistake that is regularly made, okay? That really creates an amazing amount of friction in, in our lives, but our in our progress as well. You all have heard this before. Celebrate all wins. Good. But what does it mean? What does it truly mean? Say, take um, take the Super Bowl, for instance, right? Do you think that the team that wins the Super Bowl this year, the Pittsburgh Steelers, because they're awesome and they rock and they're going to crush everybody, you think the team that wins the Super Bowl should wait to win the Super Bowl to celebrate? You're like, of course not, Pat. They should win. They should celebrate getting in the Super Bowl. Yeah, they should. What else should they celebrate? They should celebrate every freaking win leading up to that game. As a matter of fact, though, where the celebration's got to start, is in practice when they get up getting knocked down that's where the celebrations have got to start and the challenge is we try to wait to the end i say we try we do wait to the end to celebrate and therefore we run out of steam often long before we get to the celebration we don't appreciate all of the wins along the way but that's just the beginning watch how the snowballs right Winning is a habit. 
and habits require repetition. Ever notice how a team that wins oftentimes can win it again? To have it. They've learned how to win. They've learned how to think like winners. They learn how to feel emotions like winners. They learn how to take actions like winners. But winners learn through their failures. Winners learn through their failures. So the celebrations don't wait to hear. The celebrations begin shortly after every failure that we make. Because it's the failure that we learn and grow from that allows us to win. And when we don't celebrate those and we don't anchor those to something strong and positive and moving forward, what happens? They take us down. We do completely dish ourselves, diss ourselves from the opportunity to learn how to be a winner. Yet, we're still waiting around for the big Super Bowl victory, and we haven't figured out how to get our ass off the floor when it gets kicked in practice. Follow me? So that's number one. Let me see if any of these relate to that. Balance, clarity, you were off the air, and now I've returned with a black screen. That's not cool. Hmm. Hmm. Hopefully uh, I'm back and so are my nines. Oh, there we go. Yeah, hopefully this it's all, the vision is good, okay? Waiting to the end to celebrate. We've got to learn every day how to celebrate. And you do so starting with the things we screw up. And I'll tell you, here's the, 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 the amazing thing about it. I don't know how you're going to celebrate, okay? I don't know if you're like doing some dance, okay? Woo -hoo, woo -hoo! Screaming out loud, yelling, creating attention amongst a whole bunch of people, and I'm just sucking in their energy. You know how quickly you could take yourself from a low down here to a high up here by just adjusting your energy? And did you know that in any given situation, when you raise your energy, your chances of success goes through the roof? The celebration allows for that. And then you now have an anchor for next time on how to pull yourself around. Winning is a habit. And when we wait for the big end, whatever that may be, I got to wait to do a deal, I got to wait to sell a book, I got to wait to get a job offer. Whatever it may be, you're not a winner and you're expecting the big prize, the big trophy that you haven't earned or deserved yet. So you're pushing it further and further away. Cool. Number two, and this is a big one here, okay? And I'll tell you what, um, high producers do this all the time. Very smart, successful people do this all the time. People that you look at and say, wow, they must have they must have it all figured out because they have the money and the cars and everything else. They must just have the world in the palm of our hand, okay? This is challenge number two that people and people make, smart people make, that upsets their game, brings them right down to the bottom. And this is what happens when you, whenever you see somebody that's apparently way up here, at least they appear there, come crashing down. And that's when they attach their success, their, their success to their self-worth. And their success is defined by something external to them. When they attach their success to their self-worth and and their success is defined as something external to them, not internal. See, external means it's not in our control. Internal, intrinsic to us, in our control. And high achievers that put achievement in front of fulfillment, which are oftentimes, you know, A personality, big entrepreneurial type people, when you put achievement in front of fulfillment, 
and your self-worth, your self-value is, is measured and based and anchored in your achievement, the moment something out there changes external to you, that can catastrophically destroy you and it's outside of your control. For instance, say you're a stock trader. Let's go back to the crash of whatever it was, 07, 2008, right? Hedge fund managers trade money, make money. Their whole self-worth and value, as they perceive it, it's not based on who they are and their internal mastery skills. It's based on how much money they make, how much money they trade, how big their commission was. And when that all crashed, which was outside of their control, there's nothing they could have done to have changed that. A lot of them crashed as well. The suicide rate on Wall Street, I kid you not, went through the roof. Hedge fund managers put guns to their head. Now, you and I, we see they're like, why would, why would they ever do that? Because their entire them, their entire them is anchored on something external to them. And that's the difference between achievement, true achievement, and fulfillment, true fulfillment. Achievement basically is a measurement of monetary and materialistic rewards. Now, although that's a good measuring stick of progress, and so forth, it's not fulfillment. Fulfillment comes from internal satisfaction, gratification. Internal comes from, fulfillment comes from knowing that no matter what situation you're put in, you will succeed. It ain't gonna be overnight always, and it may be some hard work, and you may get bloody along the way. The self master skills, which are available to you and I, when you anchor into those, you know that, you know what, even if I were to lose everything right now, because I still got me. How many people you know like that? That's what I'm talking about there. I see it all the time. And these people are like roller coasters. And the challenge is, They've fallen into the category of people that, unfortunately, have given up. Although they look like high achievers and high producers, they've given up the control. So look at this in terms of two categories of people. Let's split this whole night up right now, okay? Right down the middle, this side and this side. This side here believes the world happens to them. Bam. And this side here believes they happen to the world. Bam. These guys base their entire self value on what they achieve or don't achieve. Don't achieve. Bam. And these people understand that their value is based on how well they find fulfillment in life that they are in charge of, they're in control of, which means that their outcome in life comes from here. And their outcome in life comes from there. See the difference? Either one can make a ton of money. Either one can get a whole bunch of stuff. But only this one, this one here, can get in flow with the universe and find true happiness. All this one can do is hope that this out here still works well with here. And they can continue to make money and, and buy things, right? But if it changes, they're screwed. In addition to that, because they're not pulling the strings, they're adapting to this, which takes them out of one of the most key and, and, and critical components of fulfillment, and that's working within their authenticity. So this little formula I'll share with you, a really good friend of mine, Jesse Elder, he, he's the founder of this formula, okay? It's called ACP, A. C P authenticity, clarity, and power. Authenticity, clarity, and power. Authenticity, being genuine, honest to who you are. You're not being who somebody else thinks you should be. You're being who you're supposed to be based on you. Authenticity, clarity. You have a message that represents 
where you stand, what you stand for and what you stand against. And it's clear. It doesn't worry what other people think. Did you know you could care about people and not care at all about what they think about you? You can care about them, but not care what they think about you. It's one of the number one greatest fears that holds us back, caring what other people think about us. I think, Andy, you said that fear of lack of interest. You're worried, you, fear of lack of interest. You're worried about what people are going to think about you bringing your stuff out. Do you think it's a value, Andy? Of course you do this. Stop worrying about what other people are going to think and bring it. If you put your authenticity together with crystal clear message and you bring it to the universe with absolute power, boom, let it out there. That is the formula for attracting wealth and abundance. That's a, that's a friction-free life right there. Not easy, no doubt, because you got to let go of some things. You got to cut some, some anchors, so to speak. But you put together those three things, and I am speaking to you, Miss Annie. You stayed up all night for this, so I'm talking to you, girl, and all of the rest of you. Okay. Kind of want clarity, and that was one of the challenges. Pat, I lack clarity. What do you mean you lack clarity? Do you lack clarity? I'm not calling you out. I'm kind of calling you out. Do you lack clarity or are there things, fears that are preventing you from hold of who you are and what you want to do? Maybe clarity's there and you're just not going for it. Could that be the case? Right? All right, let me, uh, let me take some of these comments. Otherwise, we're going to get so far along here that we won't get back. All right. Let's see. Uh, we'll just go right in line with Sherry. And just seen a kick in the butt tonight because my business has been on hold for months. Trying to learn to rework my time to blend my responsibilities together. So thanks for doing this presentation tonight. All right. You sound like, without even saying it, that there's a bit of a clarity, uh, a bit of a prior, priority issue here. Okay. So, and, and everybody, everybody on this voices range and outside of that has challenged putting things in order of priority, right? We all do. So this is what I'd say that, okay? That we have to separate really what, separate our to-dos and our, and our objectives from what our bigger intention is. What your to-dos, your, your goals are, from what's the bigger purpose okay because you can goal in a business of making money and focus intently on that and it pull you away from what your bigger intention is it truly can because you make it about money and not make it about whatever this intention is so without knowing without you being more specific there Jerry I would just say this okay what is the bigger purpose to all of this? And don't just stop at, well, my family. Your family what? Your kids? Husband? Your family what? I want to raise my kids right. No, I'm, that's, not, that's not clear. You want to empower your kids to take on a world that's getting more screwed up? Now we're getting somewhere. You want to give them skills so that no matter what, they'll have the confidence to stand on their own two feet, not give a shit what other people think, and know that whatever comes out of their mouth, they have something to say of value. Would that be an amazing skill to pass on to your kids? Confidence, self-worth. That's adding clarity to this. And I'm, I'm playing out your, your situation, Sherry, without knowing exactly what it is. I'm just giving you an example. Once you know that level of clarity, okay, good. So how do you fit into that? What do you do every day? Because that's gonna help give you priority in, in, in all of that's in our lives every day. Okay. Let's uh, um, let's move along. Oh, that's Susan with the stuff thing there. No, no, no. Susan says, um, I'm always busy, but not necessarily doing what's the most important. Just seem to be sucked in what's happening in the moment. Pretty sure it's because I'm ADD, shiny object syndrome. Always, although that may be the reason, 
It mustn't be the excuse. No. All right. Yeah. So good. Who here has used the ADD excuse? Be honest. We all have, right? I got. It. I, I'm just an entrepreneur. I'm all over the place. I'm. A, it's what entrepreneurs do. No, that's quite honestly bullshit. Okay. It's called being distracted, and distractions don't happen to us unless we're a victim. And victims sit over here. They don't sit over here. Victims don't belong here. Victims only sit over there. And to say that distractions happen to you is playing the victim role. Off the couch. Take a little responsibility. Don't blame it on this ADD crap. What it is, is you're allowing, choosing distractions in your life to avoid doing something that you don't want to do or taking on something that you're shying away from. Maybe it's a fear of failure. Maybe it's a fear of taking on or saying something or being somebody because you're worried about some bullshit opinion of somebody down the street. Follow me? We've got to take a high level responsibility, take some ownership. So we deserve to be over here where we happen to the world and not sit here and accept that the world happens to us. So look at playing the role of either a creator, the role of a participant, or the role of a spectator. The spectator, I wonder if I could draw this shit for hang on. Ah, forget it. I'll just draw it. the spectator is the one who sits on the sidelines. Okay. The spectator watches everything going on around them and comments on it. And it's typically critical. Cynical. Do that. That ain't gonna work. Today's market sucks. Just good, good, good thought, but I wouldn't do it. Well, clearly, because you're a spectator, you sit on silent. And you know what? They're the ones who sit in the proverbial comfort zone while life passes them by. Not growing, not expanding, but they will be absolutely certain to have something to say about your stuff. The participant's a little different. The participant gets in the game. Like, game? Game on. I'm in. They learn, they grow, they expand, but they still play by somebody else's rules, right? They're a participant, like a player stepping on a football field or like me stepping on the jujitsu mats and training. I didn't create anything there. I'm a learner, I'm a student, and I'm expanding there, but I'm still playing by somebody else's rules. And the creator is the one who writes the rules. They're the ones who create the circumstances. They're the ones who, well, they're the ones who happen to everybody over here. So our job, yours and I, to constantly steady grow, right, is to play the role of the creator as often as we possibly can. And a, a participant, when we have to step down and Step in a mode of learning and growing and expanding under somebody else's rules. 80%, 20% is probably a good mix. And if you look in your lives, there's parts that you were the creator, maybe are the creator, and other parts that you are the participant. A spectator should be way down here and it should never be cynical. There's a time where it just makes sense to stand aside, just, you know, all right, we're just whatever. But these are creators over here, okay? They're the ones that the, rule, that the world rolls around. A musician who has an idea, thought, a passion, puts it in words on a paper, then puts it in notes, then allows that music to get played. He's a creator on many levels. When that music is being played, it's creating a set of circumstances and rules around it that people will respond to. That's truly a creator. Okay. So I don't buy the ADD. I buy that you're avoiding something. You're allowing distractions into your life. Simple antidote. Take responsibility for that. Except that if you watch, you know, when you go to these high drama bullshit TV shows, you do it for one reason, to leave your life and get into somebody else's, to get a break from your life. That's a distraction. That's an avoidance technique. No different than drinking or smoking or gambling is. 
no different than playing endlessly on Facebook so you can leave your life and get into somebody else's miserable life. Accept it what it is for, for what it is and take ownership of it. Otherwise, we'll forever be standing over here just being letting the world poop on us. Right? Thank you for sharing that. That was awesome, Susan. I hope that doesn't scare the rest of you guys out of sharing. <laughs> You guys didn't come here, I know, for us to just to kind of like play patty cake, right? So let's just let's have some fun with this and uh, just jam on. <laughs> uh, Mr. Michael says, here's what I'm going through right now. I want to make more money, my job, but I basically hit the salary ceiling. Now I can leave and start my own. Now I can leave and start my own thing, but I'll lose my steady paycheck and benefits. I'm afraid because I have my wife and three other mouths to feed, not to mention everything else that goes with it. Good, 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 good. And this ties in very well to our third mistake that people make, okay? Do we do number two? Yeah, we did number two. We'll get right into number three, okay? And the third mistake, we get caught up thinking that the means is the end. The means is the end. So their job like you're speaking to, Michael, is the end. When in fact, most of what we do up into our 40s or even later are really nothing more than preparation and practice for the big show. So I had this conversation. I can't tell you who or what just because it's, it's done in confidence, but it was a with a gentleman reti re retiring from high-level service, okay? And... High-level service in the Navy, and he um he's having a hard time retiring after twenty some odd years. And you military folks will, will will relate to what I'm about to say here. Okay, he's having a very hard time retiring, and I couldn't understand why because he had such wonderful gifts waiting for him at home, his wife and his kids. And after long, you know, long conversations, and early in the morning, three in the morning, you know, a few beers around the campfire type thing. It occurred to me what was happening here, that there was an association with retiring and it all coming to an end, that things are coming to an end. My show is over, that the means is, in his mind, the end. And I shared this little concept with him. I'll use a fake name, Joe. The Joe. Your experience, your knowledge, your wisdom, what you've been through, there's very, very few people in this world that can match you there. Do you have something to share? What do you mean, Pat? Well, after your 24, five, six years, do you have something you could bring back, maybe that could benefit my kids, your kids? How about some adults? I mean, you could, oh, of course, Pat, I mean, what we did, what we know, and he starts lighting up. Now, yeah. how about in leadership? Do you see any possibility for where we're a lack of leadership today? Oh, yeah. Bah, it's getting louder and louder. Bam, stop. You got it. You've practiced for 24 years. You're about to get up on the big, big stage here. That was never the end. That was the means to the stage, the show. It's time. See what I'm getting at? See, and I'll read the uh, Steve Jobs quote because it's brilliant and a foresight into this brilliant. You've heard this before that you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards, right? So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect your future. And we get so caught up in the day-to-day -day and where we're at, we think that this is it. This is the show. Oh, this is all practice. You just don't know how the dots connect. Neither do I. But they do. We have to have faith in that. Our job is to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it. So go back to you, Michael, okay? I want to make more money, my job, but there's a salary ceiling. Okay, so you got to come up with a strategic plan because you're worried about the security from my wife, three miles to feed, not to mention anything else that goes with it. I get that. I understand that. Believe me, I do. And let me start with this. It's one of the biggest traps. That we start teaching our kids right at the high school and college level that we got to be secure. Na there's no security in nature 
at all. The universe has never designed a single thing with any sense of security. And there's very few jobs out there that are secure. And in my opinion, when somebody else can cut you off, if somebody else is in charge of cutting you down, it is not secure. That makes sense? My only security is knowing that no matter what, no matter the situation I'm put in, no matter the financial doom that could happen upon me, that I will prevail one way or the other, and I will get back up. And me, my wife, and three kids will be just fine. Does that mean it'll be easy? No. I mean, we might get beat up a long way? Yeah. But removing the fear of security and a false pretense of security allows us to expand. So, Michael, let me just ask you this. And this is an advice. It's asking you. Let's remove the fear for a second. The fear. See, Michael, if the security thing wasn't an issue, what would you do? You already told me you're at a ceiling right now. You can't grow anymore. I just will jump up the pad. You can't grow anymore. What would you do? As far as I'm concerned, you've got a bigger obligation, a bigger responsibility. You were given the gift of kids. Kids should not be taught to settle for security, in my humble opinion. Now, does that mean you should run out and go quit your job? Of course not. But does that mean maybe we should come up with a strategic plan that says, okay, I'm going to do A, B, C, and D, and E, I'm out. Something like that. And that plan is, that there's a thousand versions of that plan. Okay? Thank you for sharing, bro. Much appreciated. All right, let's move along here. Clarity for the right direction. I think we touched on that. I think that, and this is from Miss Deborah. Without Deb, without you giving me more, I don't know how to properly answer that. But I'd say, if you lack clarity, start back with who you are. Who are you, young lady? Maybe you haven't been you in such a long time. You're having a hard time finding you. I I say that not not as a uh, uh, like an attack on you, but I know people like that. I've worked with people just like that. But we've got to just spend a little time finding you, letting you out. Peel out the freaking layers. Let you out. Right? Every single one of us has a massive spirit inside of us. We're born with it. It didn't go anywhere. It's there. The only thing that happens, the only thing that separates us from children, the youth, is that we encapsulate ours we tone it down we put it away because sometime way back when or maybe more recently we wanted to do something so bad and it hurt so bad and one day we woke up in fear we just can't do it it's ever going to happen so to make that pain go away we try to hide our spirit but the freaking thing is still there you know it's the simplest definition of suffering when our our definition, my definition, your definition of what our life is going to be like is no longer in compliance with the life we lead. And that's pain when we're, we, well, how we vision life and how life is. When they don't match up, they don't do this, that's pain. But when we believe that we can't do anything about it, we're out of control, that's suffering. Self-inflicted. Self-imposed, we chose it, not real, fake, not genuine, unauthentic, but it's suffering. We still suffer for real. And that pain sucks. And one of the things we do to, to fix that is instead of pushing towards achieving the life we want, our true passion, our true authenticity, and again, when you're outside your authenticity, you're out of flow with the universe. Everything is a fight. Every step of the way is a battle. Nothing seems to line up. When we're out of all that, okay, we start covering up our spirit. What can we do to make that flame go away so we don't feel it anymore? That way, there won't be that friction, and we'll just go through life. Not genuine, not authentic, not in flow, but at least that pain will be present. So you only gave me four words to work here, clarity for right direction. 
I'm going to take from that, okay, that you kind of lost touch with really who you are. And therefore, you don't know where, where to go. I get it. And it's fixable. Quickly. Very quickly fixable. All righty here. Um, that was good, by the way. Thank you for that. We got... Uh, here, here we go with another one on balance. How to balance family versus business in regards to time. As I free up time, I want to sp uh, spend it with the family. I understand it's a decision, but it seems like a catch-22. There will always be, in an ideal world, right, we'd want to spend all or most of our time with our family, right, in a perfect world. But truth is, the world isn't perfect, and they don't want us to spend that much time with them. Let's be honest with them. They want to go out and grow and expand as well. We all do. We should encourage our kids and our wife, all of us, to do different things at times of our lives. And at the same time, make sure we have enough time together so we do watch our kids grow up. And we do maintain a healthy, growing relationship with our wives, right? Now, there's ways you can cheat time. And I'm just going to give you an example, okay? Because many of you know that I don't like to travel that much. I do travel enough, typically once a month, okay? But I made a commitment a while ago to my wife. Because when I travel, the, work, the family at home doesn't work as well, right? So I don't travel as much as I could. Plenty of opportunity, plenty of money in traveling, but I don't travel that much. When I do, I made this commitment. So Trace, every time I leave, when I get back, I get back on a Sunday night or Monday night. That Wednesday, we're going to sit down, and I'm going to teach you everything I learned from the weekend. I'm going to coach you up. So what this does, it allows her to become part of what I do and I'm away from them, right? And now we're still growing and expanding together. There's different ways to, to blend those in, okay? You will never find balance because there'll be different things at different times of your life that'll so have more priority to you. It's as simple as that, okay? So don't look for balance. Look for a way. Look for more of a... I don't know how to say it, uh, um, an engagement that is ideal. That's really what's important. And, and that doesn't mean balance because you guys all know as well as I do, you can spend a half an hour with your family and it'd be the drop dead, most connected, awesome, insane time that you had with your family. And on another occasion, spend four hours with them, everybody being in a freaking zone. And it's almost like that time sucked and didn't exist. So it's more finding the proper engagement. And then when you're away from each other, how do you combine and cheat that time? Like I do when I'm away and I come back and coach up my wife. She gets to experience everything I do. While I'm away, I show her pictures of things I'm doing. So she's part of it. Okay, cheating that space a little. Could you not, you know, when you can't be with your kids, engage them at some level that way. That's an ongoing battle. Believe me, I get it. But we can be smart about it too, okay? The other thing I'll say in that too is make sure priorities are always crystal clear. All right. For instance, is the objective to make money or is the objective to provide for your family? Which doesn't just mean money, it's emotionally, spiritually, mentally. Right? I've screwed that up before. I almost screwed up our our family because of it. Because I was so focused on making money. When I say something, hey, Pat, so why do you do this? Oh, I do it for what, why everybody does it, to provide for the family. And over here, I'm just spending all my time making money, making money, making money, making money. And really, I'm not providing for the family. I may be buying them shit, but I'm not there for their emotional support. I'm not there to love them all the time. You understand what I'm saying, right? Understanding your priorities will help with that. All right. Continue on here. I, I know that we still have the, um, the two habits to achieve a friction-free life, which we kind of touch on as we go over, but we'll still get to them. Deciding to stay or leave a, uh, a family business. Good one. Brian, I'll do this real quickly, okay? I thought I couldn't leave a family business. I was engaged in a family business, and I was building my real estate investment company that was just jamming, and I had a brand new young family. I had no time. And my parents... Reaching nearing their 70 years old mark, we're, we're setting the business up to hand it over to me so they could retire. And this is the exact same moment that I was spending so little time with my family that I almost destroyed us. And then shortly thereafter, it was brought to my attention by my wife. 
what a shitty job I was doing in my decision making. <laughs> I'm really shortening this story, okay? And I had to make a decision in moments, not in days, months, or weeks, weeks or years. Like by the end of the weekend, make a decision. And when your back is against the wall and you're about to lose something that's so near and dear to you, and that's great clarity to what's most important. I quickly learned at that point in time that I freaking can't stand my family business. Love my parents to death. Hated doing the business. I did it all for them. Just pretended it otherwise. And it was so easy to bam, be gone. I didn't, you know, I didn't hang my parents out. We worked out ways to, if I took care of them, okay? But in terms of retiring a business, it had to happen. It had to happen that moment. So I'd ask you, if you had to lose something, well, which would it be? And if you're even asking me that question, about should I retire a family business? You and I already know the answer. <laughs> Unproduct uh, unproductivity, busy doing unproductivity, busy doing unimportant tasks. Unimportant tasks we do to sidestep our real priorities. They're distractions. They're just a little different than watching TV. Get real and get honest with yourself. It's time to do the real work. The little shit will either get done or not get done, but it won't make or break you. Not doing the big stuff will keep you from moving forward. So you gotta ask yourself a question. How much longer are you willing to accept that bullshit behavior from you? Seriously. I mean, let's just be honest. It's only you and I in the room. Let's be honest. How much longer are you willing to accept that kind of crap from yourself? And I'd ask you this. If you need a little extra push, who's watching? Because we all influence other people. How many other people are watching this low level that you accept of performance? That one's pretty straightforward. We've all been there. We all do it. Just, Jim, just step it up. Okay? Uh, how to mo motivate a key person in a business so we can all move forward? Well, Nikki, good question, okay? Let me just define between motivation and inspiration, okay? I'm not a big motivation fan. I'm going to be honest with you. There's a time and a place for motivation, okay? But motivating as an employee or an employer to an employee is exhausting. And if they need that constant motivation, they're not the right person. What I would lean towards is finding a way to truly inspire them. The difference is this, okay? If you have to do something that you don't want to do, you're going to have to motivate the crap out of yourself to get it done. And with a little extra willpower, some grit, you'll get it done. You're motivated through doing it, right? But when you're truly inspired towards an outcome, you don't need that push. You don't have to fall back on willpower, which is depletable. It's a, it's a resource that we can use up in quick order in any given day. Till it recovers again but when you're inspired you're drawn towards an outcome you don't feel like it's work you feel like it's something that you want to do you want the results you want the outcome so in this situation the way to convert from the need to motivate to the seeding of inspiration is to find a bigger end to what this is all about for them okay now you say well they just got a remedial job and um, they make very little money. That doesn't mean that's not a means to something much bigger and greater. It's not permanent. It's not who they are in terms of, you know, it doesn't put a, a label on them, but it does provide a path. It's part of the stepping stones to the greater ends that they're, that they're striving to achieve. So the antidote is focus on the ends at that point. Stop worrying about these stupid things trying to, you know, judge your self-worth based on remedial tasks along the way. And that, that's kind of where you have to go with that, Nikki. And I'll forewarn you, not everybody's ready, willing, or able to step up. That's fine. Just let it go. That's fine. Not everybody's ready, willing, or able to step up to that level. Because it takes another, like a high-level responsibility. Not everybody's there. Okay? Great question. And, and, and I, do, um, I do wish you luck with that. And I'll tell you that, what I just spoke of, that applies to you and I as well, okay? We've got to 
take that level of responsibility. You know, there's shit we have to do every single day that a lot of it is not fun. Sometimes it's terrible. I know you guys can't see where I am, but I have an office in our fitness center. It's way out there. It's big. It's 16,000 square feet. Every once in a while, the place looks like crap. And if, you know, we're opening, I got to clean the thing because it didn't get done, whatever. I'm like, you know what? You know what I put in my head? As I'm slopping this mop around, which I'm totally cool with doing, I say, you know what? First person through that door is going to be inspired. The way this place looks, the way it feels, the noise, the sound of the music that's going on, the smell that's in the air. So I, every time I slop this mop back and forth, I'm inspiring somebody. If somebody's inspired, I'm impacting their lives. If I'm impacting their lives, I'm leaving an impact. So now this mop becomes a tool to impact people's lives with. And that's 100% true. All of that. Just a little repositioning there. Mr. Chet, good to see you here, brother. Balance and how to get the client you want, not taking jobs just to keep people busy. Profit-oriented mission. I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, Chet, but I would say this about all clients, okay? I forget what you do. The best clients are ones that you attract. The best clients are ones that you attract. When you go look for them, you'll find everything. When you attract them, you'll find exactly what you want. Now, Chad, forget what you do, okay? I don't know why I forget, but the difference here is that, and I'll give you an example. Again, fitness center here. We have, a, we, have a, we have a tight group. We're a little, maybe 550, 600 people here, right? And they're tight. They go, how do they get tight? Because they have a common culture. And I allow that culture to ooze out here and attract more people like it. It's a high performance. It's a high result. It's a high respect. It's a high accountability culture. And it's awesome. And not everybody wants to play there. But the people that come in are the people I want in here. Right? So, Chad, I would, I would think in terms of instead of marketing, how do we attract and start going down that path without knowing Exactly what you're talking about here. Jason says, nice. Uh, <laughs> Berto says, 40, um, 49ers. Eh. Uh, and Tony says, really appreciate you, brother. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Sherry says, bingo, Pat. Thank you. Um, you nailed it. I've slacked up for long enough. And don't. And here's a good. Um, I'm slacking off. And I'm doing stupid things and making mistakes. We all do them. And we'll all do them again. And then we'll all do them again and again, okay? Mistake, generally speaking, that is the crime. The crime is what you and I choose to do after it. Do we step up? If we really effed up, do we step up and take responsibility for it like a big boy and like big girl? Admit we made a mistake. If we got a real foundational crack, find a way to get it fixed. Right. We'll make mistakes. The mistake is the opportunity to learn and grow. And that's one of those habits, okay, that really successful people implement on a daily basis that helps remove friction in their lives. Because they don't see setbacks as setbacks. They see setbacks as learning opportunities, opportunities to celebrate. <laughs> Woo -hoo! That's what I'm talking about. Yes, it happened, made a mistake, but let's fix it and celebrate the growth in any way you want. Raise your energy, raise your level, accept a higher standard in life. Be an example for everyone around you. Stop caring about what people think. Doesn't matter. Annie, doesn't matter. You're awesome. I know you're awesome. You know that you're awesome. Some people might think differently. Who cares? Because you're going to attract the ones that love Annie. And they will love Annie. I guarantee you there's people that have probably dropped off this call tonight because they don't like the way I talk and they am too aggressive. That's okay. Care for them and not care what they think of me. I shouldn't change how I want to deliver to you based on what somebody might think of me. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Susan says, oh, yeah, that was fun, Pat. That was when we were grilling Susan. That was awesome. Uh, Mr. John, good to see you here, Mr. John. Says, five days ago, two years. It was two years I lost a job at tw of 28 years. I'm still recovering in a way. I think I'm close to owning my new business. I started taking more consistent action after periods of inconsistency. I need to maintain that and feel like the expert doer I was. I don't have the formula. I can only try to leverage the recent contracts I've met out of my own, contacts I've met out of my own brain. You got to bring this to a whole nother level. I've told you guys a story about my son. I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you shortly because I know many of you have heard this, okay? My son started wrestling as a freshman in high school, never wrestled before, and immediately got moved up to skill, but because the coach thought he saw something in him and they had an opening on the varsity side. That's the real reason, okay? In that weight class. So he's wrestling against kids. Oh, yeah, and the school he joined or went to high school in, which is this is a senior year, was a, is a double L, means big, 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 double L, two year in a row state champions in wrestling. So this is high level wrestling. So he's wrestling against kids that have wrestled eight, nine, ten years already. You want to know what his record was his first year after his first year? And I want to know how many would still be on this team. His record was zero wins, 40 losses, zero wins, 40 losses. That's tough for a young kid, a freshman in high school, on a varsity team. First, you don't think you belong there. Your self-worth is at zero. Second, you feel like you're hurting the team, not helping the team. Where do you find value? So this is something I had to deal with with him, right? Patrick, here's the deal. Let's not focus on the win. Let's start celebrating little wins along the way. We see progress here. You're here for a reason. You and I don't see the dots connecting yet, but we know there's a reason. It's not fate. You know who believes in fate? I hope this doesn't offend any of you. These people over here, that if it's meant to be, it'll be. That's such bullshit. That's thinking the world happens to you. You happen to the world. Fate believes that everything happens for a reason. Happens, causes something. But it, the reason wasn't the cause of it happening. Everything that happens causes something. And it happens because of a decision that we make. We happen to the world. We cause it by a decision we make. Something's not meant to happen, therefore, causes us. Follow me on that? And explaining this to a ninth grade is a lot of difficult size. Patrick, you know, we don't know how they connect, but I do know that you're meant to be here and we've got a job to do. So let's get going. Forget about winning. Let's work on not getting pinned. So we focus the first second, the first half of the second season on not getting pinned. And did a pretty damn good job. Pinning's the worst thing in wrestling. Get freaking pinned, it sucks, right? Pinning's the worst thing in wrestling. Second half of the season, we said, Patrick, you're gotten this. You're be you're like the least pinned guy on the varsity team, and he was. But at some point, you got to switch from not losing. To going on offense, right? Playing not to win or playing not to lose is different than playing to win. We had to slowly take this change. You know what we ended the season with? The end of the sophomore year, 40 losses, one win. An amazing growth. You actually left that year with a level of confidence because now he saw incrementally he's the least pinned guy on the team. He got his points when he went from high points against him to constantly getting lower and lower and lower. He started getting takedowns, started getting moves on other guys, feeling some of his little boy muscles turn into big boy muscles, and he finally gets a win. Now, from the outside, he's everybody looking in, those people that we shouldn't care anyways what they think, but if we did, all they'd be seeing is one win, 80 losses. Think about that one. As an adult, how we deal with that. Then put ourselves in the shoe of now a sophomore in high school who's got his ass kicked for two years in a row. Don't even put his letter on his coat because he doesn't feel like he's earned it. Doesn't feel like he's deserved it. Like Patrick, 
you own that letter. Put it on your coat. Ain't happening. And I can respect that. Honestly made me tear up when he told me that. That's a tough way to go through school because we've all been there. We don't have that confidence. We we don't we, we don't feel our self worth. We've all been there. All right. What's next? So we're going to our junior year, but this time we had a plan that we we got here. Now it's going to start to change. And we you know we took inventory of the brutal facts, the reality. Listen to this, John, of where we were here and now. And the truth was, we're still going to wrestle kids better than us. The truth was, though, that their learning curve, when they wrestled eight years before high school, by the time they're a sophomore year, their learning curve is almost plateaued and Patrick is starting to skyrocket. And at some point, this is going to cross this. And that's what we're looking at now. That's our new target. And in order to shrink the context of those two curves, okay, in order to... So you have a boy here that's been wrestling all his life, okay? The curve, he started out learning sharp, 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 but he's already plateaued out. Then you have Patrick who started here, right? But this curve's going like this, uphill. This right here is around the junior year. We're hoping these cross, these skill levels cross. Patrick's still learning. The way we increase that, the way we shrink the context of that whole environment is we put him in camp at the end of his sophomore year. We put him in camp again at the beginning of the summer, at the end of the summer, and again in the fall. And he's a weightlifting camp and wrestling camp. We made up some freaking time. So how's this? Junior year, after being one in 80, Patrick, don't forget about the past. Let's focus here and now. And this is when most people quit, right before the breakthrough, right before their big day. And believe me, there's a lot of crying events between he and I where I'm sucking it up to be the best dad I can because my son's heartbroken and, and not finding his value right now, right? But he muscled through it. Junior year, he ends up winning. His, his record was 31 wins, 9 losses. Quantum breakthrough. Whereas a moment ago, he wanted to quit. He ended up winning his division in the SCC's first place. Right? Now, he's coming into his senior year. And this year... All of this leading up to now, the practice for the big stage. Follow me on how that works out. But we don't know that looking back his freshman year when he got put on a team. And then, oh, and he did put his he put his uh, letter on his jacket at the end of last year. Like, how cool is that, right? But looking back, we didn't know how those dots connected. Did I think that <laughs> maybe he wasn't cut out for wrestling? There's a moment or two. He's always been a tough kid. But I didn't know if his heart was going to make it through this, right? Follow me on that, John. I get where you're at, brother, okay? But remember this. It's always right before the breakthrough that the skies get the darkest. See, I'm still recovering. Dude, if, I could, if, if you're, like, right here, like, right here, like, almost knock you out hard slap. And he'd shock you. He'd be like, Pat, what the freak was that for? He'd like, John, John, what are you doing? Dude, you're awesome. What are you waiting for? Well, I'm not quite over that bullshit. Get over it. That's so far in the past. And you will see why those losses happen at some point. But you got to get moving. Let's do this for, I get, let me just see how we, oh my gracious. <laughs> let me do this for a second. Let me finish our two things that I promised you, okay? And then we'll get further along and I'll answer questions as long as you guys want. But I want to kind of get along with what I promised you guys with, okay? 
So dealing, so I already started, okay, the, the two paths I know, two habits that I've implemented in my life, and I see other people that, that seem like they're floating through, that seem like they've gotten it, have them implemented, okay? One of them is how they deal with setbacks. See, the setbacks don't stop. I mean, my son, he had some, he had in, in one of the finals of a match he should have won last year against a lesser wrestler. He was lost in a big competition, and it kind of hurt the team a bit. Setbacks won't end. How you deal with them is critical, though. And I see every setback. I take it for what it's worth. I don't deny the reality of it. I don't try to, you know, uh, uh, positivity my way through it. I don't do any of that crap. I get to the brutal facts of what it is, as bad as it is, and no worse. As bad as it is, and no worse. Once I get there, once I get to the truth, now I can go through my debriefing, what just happened, what did I do that, that helped contribute to it, what could I have done differently, what did I learn, what am I going to move forward with, debrief it. Now I'm done. I've got no business playing in the past with that one anymore got me and that's one of the habits that just allows a friction free life not getting hung up focusing on, on what we didn't do right let's move forward and focus on what we're going to do better next time we can immediately turn around that's the key to this habit it allows you to snap out of it pretty much unscathed take full responsibility get to the truth of it once we're at the truth of it we can grow from it if we don't get to the truth and we don't have the guts to tell the truth, be honest, we can't improve anything. That's a good point. Okay. The next here, and we kind of touched on that, but that life is free will and not fate. Okay. Everything that we do is practice. Remember this whole thing over here. Okay. We happen to life. If it's meant to be, it's up to you and me. That's the reality of it. If it's meant to be, it will be. Means that life will happen. And it may or may not happen. And you're giving up control. I blame somebody for something. I've given up control. So I'm blaming them. Means they were in control. They did it. And I'm giving up control. Hey, it happened. And I'm moving forward. I could grow from this. See the difference? When you start implementing those two pieces here, and you'll find that life flows in a lot more friction-free capacity. I'm just looking for a couple little notes I had, and I think we got all this stuff, okay? Listen, for those of you who are, because I, I see a couple questions on, Pat, what does this all have to do with the Six Pillar Program? This tonight's not a pitch about our six, but of course, I want you guys to be part of it, because all that we're doing here, we do for six intense weeks, okay? And some of you are in the program and can speak to it. It's raucous. It creates a foundational basis so that we can attract wealth and abundance in our life and come from this space where we're the creator and not the always spectator and participant. That's what the Six Pillar Program is all about. It's done six weeks in a row. It's pretty. It uh, starts on a Monday each time and administers a whole bunch of exercises throughout the week. And it goes through Friday and Saturday. He said, this isn't a... So I pitch for it, but I do want you into the program. So what I'm going to do for you guys, okay? And then we're going to get on to all these questions here in a moment. I'm just going to give you a very, very simple offer, okay? Because on our site, it's a $1,500 program. For those of you who are interested in the program, want to do it tonight, I'll knock it right down to 1000 bucks. And if you want a payment program, I can do that for you as well. I don't care. I want you part of the program, okay? But here's the deal. I'll make this offer good for as long as you want up to midnight tonight. And after that, it's a regular price. And I do that for no other reason than I want to allow you an opportunity to make a decision if it's something you're into, okay? There are some people on this program that are here listening because they know that all the stuff we do together is always awesome. So for those of you who are interested, I'll click up a little box right there. Um, you can take a look at it. Hopefully that's on your screen, uh, that sign up box right now. If you need the payment program, go to the payment program. We'll get you handled there. 
All right, I'm going to go back to the questions here. And remember, all the stuff that I'm going over here, I've broken down into six training modules, parts, skill sets, foundational building blocks that we work on together in a group. And it's not done just in a um, information dump capacity. It's done in such a way that we deliver information on Monday, but then we go through a week-long experience, a challenge to embed the actual true education in it, which culminates with you actually teaching this to somebody else in addition to sharing your experiences throughout the week and going through a reflection process on Friday or on Saturday. So it's pretty cool what we do here. All right. Uh, I got John. And let me know, too, if uh, I'm back on questions. If I assume that that box or you can toggle back and forth with that box if you're looking for that. Uh, see, Brian is my father's offering me his business that I currently work at, but must take on a partner that's technically sound, but not personally sound. I'm done. I'm out. Not, oh, oh, you're saying not personally sound. Are you saying you've got to take on an existing partner that's not personally sound? I'd be out. I'd be out. My personal relationships with my partners come first and their ability to be rock solid. If, that, if that's not there, I'm out, but I'll continue reading. Also, the business is time intensive, has many issues in management direction. I have worked with the people at the business challenging, not sure if I should risk more time, family time, and take on the position or move. Dude, you know, you're, you're telling me about it, Brian. You don't even sound, you're, you're unselling it to me. You're telling me all the reasons why you shouldn't. Now, of course, I can't tell you a definitive yes or no, but based on your posturing right here, so you know the answer. What are you hiding from in making the right decision? What are you afraid of? And that's not an answer to answer here. That's an answer for you to answer yourself. Are you afraid of, I know father-son relationships pretty well on both ends, right? Are you afraid of disappointing your dad and letting him down? I get it. But that's not more important than doing what's right for your family. And you may find that although you think you might be letting him down, that, that may not be the truth. Remember the four agreements, make no assumptions. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Jason saying, thank you, Pat. You're very welcome. Um, and he says, thank you, Pat. I have to go. I have an appointment. Uh, I hope you recorded this and can watch it again. Have a great weekend. You as well, young lady. Yes, these are recorded. Um, Pat, I really enjoy listening to you. I've heard some of the things you've, you've said a few times over, but Every time I always take a little more information from it, not to mention a high level enthusiasm. God bless my new, God bless you, sir. Thank you. You never get everything the first time. Ms. Sherry saying yes. Uh, Deborah saying uh, spot on and thank you. Sometimes without accomplishing success, I feel like a loser lo loving your inspiration. It's easy. You know what? Our biggest, you want the single greatest tip to achieving wealth, abundance, success, whatever you want to call it in your entire life. You master this one thing, you've got, the world is at your waist. You want to know what it is? You'll get this, Debbie. It's that little voice between our ears, that little voice in here that beats the hell out of us. That's why we spend an entire freaking week on dealing with that. We all have it, and everybody you know has it. The only difference is how well we deal with it. That's the only difference between you and the most successful person you know in your life. They got the same voice, and it, it, sometimes it's blah, 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 nonstop chatter, and it can beat the crap out of us. Master that, everything else is gravy. Comes easy after that. And yes, we spend a lot of time on that. Um, let's see. Hang on one sec. My uh, tech guys helped me with something. <laughs> ah, he's got all Isn't that cool? He can jump on my computer and fix something that I screw up. Um, Pat, you keep spending time with your family uh, or anything else, but you choose to continue to share your gifts and knowledge with so many people. I just want to say how grateful and appreciative I am for it. I am pumped and a better person for it. Yeah, you know, the truth is, um, Roberto, my kids are at home right now. I'm up at the office doing this presentation. You say, well, you if you could choose that, why aren't you back there? How do you create that balance? Well, part of my role beyond this, beyond you know, inviting you guys to six pillars and all that kind of stuff, 
my role is to have as big an impact as I possibly can while I'm here. I'm giving gifts to do that. And I respect those gifts. And that's how I explain it to my kids too. Do you know my kids, I'll find once in a while when I'm doing these presentations at home, they'll be just outside the curtain listening in. Kids are very perceptive that way. They're also perceptive to adult problems. When they, you know, one of the things I tell my kids all the time, say, you know, do not talk about a friend or a foe in any negative capacity without them present or in a way that you wouldn't repeat right to their face. In other words, don't talk about other people and bring them down to bring yourself up, which is why people talk about other people. They get it. They understand. But they then hear adults, friends of ours, adults, dissing other people that are friends over here. Like that. You should teach some of that shit to them. My job, okay, is create the impact. But thank you for those words. Um, Brian says, Pat, thanks for the webinar. Great editing your format. I'll be watching the next and see you at the gym. You got it, brother. Great to see you, man. Um, 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 um. Let's see. Uh, John, don't see any box to sign up. Try again. Give it a website. Um, hopefully it's up now, John. Um, and there's Michael saying, it is awesome, Pat, Six Pillar for Life. Booyah. Yeah, Michael's part of the Six Pillar. The cool thing about the Six Pillar program is it is for life. It's a community that I'm growing and building, okay? Will it at some point be a movement? It will be of the right-minded people. That's the cool thing about it. And that's why I'm, made, I'm doing it in a way that I want everybody to become part of it. So I got to make it in, in, a, in an affordable capacity for everybody. That's why if you need a payment plan, just do the payment plan. Whatever. I don't care. Let's just all move forward together. Okay? Uh, but thank you for that, Mr. Michael. Um, don't see any boxes from Mr. John. That's why Mike came out and fixed it. And then Sammy saying, thank you so much, Pat. And Mr. John found the box, and so did Jill. Awesome. All right. Cool beans. All right, Mr. Ladies and gentlemen. And see, okay, so we're about that hour and a half mark. All right, so we're going to kind of um, wrap this up here. If there's any final questions, comments, this is the time to do it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope we found something positive to pull out of this to grow with, okay? Um, we'll be doing this again at some point. Don't know when, don't know how, but we'll bring it back to it. And like I said, I do this, A, to make it difference to make sure your time spent with us tonight is of value and something will be different in your lives tomorrow and b i want you part of the community find a way to become part of the six pillar program it's a foundations the foundation building block okay we spend six weeks on each one of them to make a change transformational change in who we are so that we can become who we're meant to be you guys are awesome Got that. This is where I need like outro music. And then Nikki said, hey, Pat, great webinar. Answered many questions and hear a lot that I needed. We'll have to do the six pillars sometime. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to click you up to one final step here. And I hope you all have an enjoyable night. Peace. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Kind of funny because. My uh, <laughs> my man Mike, who oversees all this stuff, he uh, told me to do something. I forgot what to do. And Donna says, "You're awesome, motivating, inspiring. You're very, very kind. Thank you for that, Miss Donna." Uh, wait, do I hit OK? I think I hit OK. And you guys have a great night. Peace.